हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू आई यूट्यूब चैनल जय श्री जवा जी टूडे विल बी कंटिन्यूड रीडिंग फ्रॉम द बुक सचिन तेंडुलकर प्लेइंग इट माई वे माई ऑटो बायोग्राफी विद बोरिया मजुमदार पार्ट नाइन आफ्टर कमिंग बैक फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान आई फेल्ट मच मोर पॉजिटिव अबाउट माई सेल्फ एज ए क्रिकेटर एंड वॉज लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू इंडिया नेक्स्ट टू अवे टू to new zealand at the start of 1990 i was pretty confident of getting picked but was still delighted to see myself in the squad when the touring side was announced india in pakistan 1989 first test karachi 15 to 20 november 1989 pakistan 409 imran khan 109 jamian that 78 as mohammad 67 M Prabhakar five to one not four, Kapil Dev four sixty nine and three not five to five December. S Malik one not two, S Muhammad ninety five, Kapil Dev three to eighty two, India two sixty two, K S Moore fifty eight, Kapil Dev fifty five, S R Tendulkar fifteen, Vakram four to eighty three, W Yunus four to eighty and three not three to three. एस वी मांजरेकार वन थर्टीन एन एस सिद्धू एटी फाइव मैच ड्रॉन सेकेंड टेस्ट फैसलाबाद ट्वेंटी थ्री टू ट्वेंटी एट नवंबर नाइनटीन एटी नाइन इंडिया टू एटी एट एस वी मांजरेकार सेवेंटी सिक्स एस आर टेंडुलकर फिफ्टी नाइन इमरान खान फोर टू फोर फोर्टी फाइव एंड थ्री नाइन्टी एट टू सेवन एम अजारुद्दीन वन नॉट नाइन एस वी मांजरेकार एटी थ्री एन एस सिद्धू फिफ्टी वन एस आर टेंडुलकर एट पाकिस्तान फोर ट्वेंटी थ्री एम मालिक वन सेवेंटीन एस मालिक सिक्सटी थ्री आर राजा फिफ्टी एट एम प्रभाकर सिक्स टू वन थर्टी टू मैच ड्रॉन थर्ड टेस्ट लाहौरे वन टू सिक्स डिसंबर नाइनटीन एटी नाइन इंडिया फाइन आउट नाइन एस वी मांजरे का टू एटीन एम आजारुद्दीन सेवेंटी सेवन आर जे शास्त्री सिक्सटी वन एस आर टेंडुलकर फोर्टी वन ए खादिर थ्री टू नाइन्टी सेवन पाकिस्तान सिक्स नाइन्टी नाइन टू फाइव एस मोहम्मद टू नॉट थ्री J Mian that one forty five, A Malik that one thirteen, match drawn. Fourth Test, Sial caught nine to fourteen December nineteen eighty nine, India three twenty four, S V Manjrekar seventy two, M Azharuddin fifty two, S R Tendulkar thirty five, W Akram five to one not one, and two thirty four to seven, N S Sidhu ninety seven, S R Tendulkar fifty seven, Imran Khan. Three to sixty eight, Pakistan two fifty, R Raja fifty six, V Rajdhan five to seventy nine, match drawn, series drawn zero to zero. Four foreign conditions. New Zealand has always been a very difficult tour for Indian cricketer. It's often windy and chilly, and that, coupled with the short boundaries in most of the grounds, makes it very different from conditions back home in India. In nineteen ninety. The challenge was doubly difficult, with Richard Hadley, one of the finest ever exponents of swing bowling, close to the best. As a seventeen-year-old on his first tour away from the subcontinent, I was excited about the opportunity. India in New Zealand, February to March, nineteen ninety. The first few days in New Zealand were not easy. the accent of the locals there was very strange to our ears and the foot took some getting used to too the accent problem resulted in an incident involving manoj prabhakar very early in the tour prabhakar needed an adapter to charge his gadgets and for some reason decided to put on what he thought was a new zealand accent while speaking to the housekeeping staff in the hotel when asking for the adapter on the intercom he was almost chewing up the first a as a result of which the word was sounding like adapter and the staff were having difficulty understanding what he was asking for prabhaka got angry after a point and said he needed the adapter immediately in a few minutes there was a knock on his door and he opened it to find a doctor standing there the staff had heard doctor for adapter partly because they pronounced doctor as dactor and had sent the resident physician to prabhakar's room 
The first game of the tour was in New Plymouth and the ground was surrounded by hills. It was as if a stadium had been planted in the middle of mountains and Bishan Singh Bedi, our manager, decided to make the most of the conditions. Bedi, one of the best left arm spinners of all time, was a really hard taskmaster and liked to make us run huge distances to improve our fitness. At New Plymouth, our fitness drills involved running in the mountains and by the end of the training sessions, we had absolutely no energy left. As in Pakistan, I did not start particularly well and in the first test at Christchurch, which started on 2nd February, I was dismissed by Danny Morrison for a golden duck. It was a good delivery, but the send-off was interesting. To say the least, I could hear most of the New Zealand players calling me a schoolboy with plenty of F-words thrown in. They kindly advised me to go back to playing cricket with my school chums suggesting that I wasn't fit to compete at international level. I kept my mouth shut. The second innings was an improvement in that I managed to stay at the wicket for close to an hour. Playing 44 balls, my 24 runs were enough to give me confidence that I was capable of holding my own in strange conditions. Although I had fallen to John Bracewell trying to cut a ball close to my body. I had successfully negotiated Richard Hardley, which I counted as an achievement. Hardley's first two deliveries to me were bouncers, but each was profoundly different from the other. The first was an outswinging bouncer that went away after pitching. The second came in from the same spot and I had to keep my eye on the ball till the last moment to get my head out of the way. Such was the ability of the man that you had to be at your best at all times to keep him at bay. New Zealand won the first test by 10 wickets and the second test match at Napier started only a few days later on 9 February. We decided to bat first after winning the toss but the first day was completely washed out by rain. The match finally started on the second day and I was unbeaten on 80 by the end of the third day's play. The ball was doing a little and batting wasn't particularly easy, but not once did I try to dominate the bowling the way I had in domestic cricket. When I went in to bat on the fourth morning, the possibility of a hundreds was on my mind. I was just 20 runs short and was determined to take my opportunity. I started well and hit the very first Danny Morrison delivery for four. For the rest of the over, he bowled short and I was content to leave everything. In his next over, I again hit a boundary of the first ball. The next was pitched up and I had already made up my mind to go for a big drive. But the drive was uppish and I was caught by the New Zealand captain John Wright at mid-off for 88. I was heartbroken. As I walked back to the pavilion, I couldn't control my tears. Why on earth did I play that shot when I was just 12 runs short? But the time I reached the boundary rope, tears were flowing down my cheeks. I'm glad there weren't too many cameras then, as these days a cameraman would definitely have picked up an embarrassing shot of me in tears. On reaching the dressing room, I went straight to the bathroom and cried for a good few minutes. Missing out on what should have been my first test, 100 was just too painful. It was only later that I was told I would have been the youngest test centurion ever. It was a missed opportunity and I remember telling John Wright after he took over as coach of India in 2005 that he really shouldn't have taken that catch. We eventually lost the three test match series 0-1 and then played the Rothmans Cup one day Tri-series with Australia as the third team, as in the first test, I was out of a duck in the first ODI against New Zealand at Dunedin on first match, caught and bowled by Shane Thompson, who was bowling medium pace. The only difference was that this time I had lasted one more ball. In the end, we lost the game by 108 runs. I made a better fist of it in my next match. On 6 March 1990, an important one in the context of the tournament, we had lost to Australia in the second game and now needed to beat New Zealand to stay in 
contention for the final. I made 36 runs of 39 balls in the process attacking their same bowlers for the first time and hitting them for quite a few boundaries. We won the game by one run with Martin Sneden run out and Richard Hardley bowled in the final over by Kapil Dev who was declared man of the match for his all-round performance. For the first time, my innings had been of use to the team in an official ODI. I couldn't do much celebrating, though because I damaged, damaged my right quadriceps during the game and had to be carried off the field. I couldn't walk at all by the evening and was on crutches for the next few days. It was the first series injury of my career and my tournament was over. While we were in New Zealand, Asha Bosley, one of the all-time great Indian singers, happened to be performing in Wellington and the team decided to do go to her concert. It was the final time I had seen her live and I just loved the experience. Asha Bosley and Lata Mangeshkar, another of India's finest singers, are still two of my favorites and to see them perform is always very special. On my return to India, my father told me that I had to hone my God-given cricketing ability. He was right. It was time for more hard to work to master the skills needed to face the fast swinging ball and I was determined to pit in the hearts in the nets. India in England, July-August 1990 After the New Zealand series, India travelled to England for what was our most important assignment of the year. India had won a test series in England in 1986 and we were all looking forward to repeating the feat. We had a training camp in Bangalore just before the series and Bishan Bedi continued with his policy of making us run miles every day. We had to jog in a line at Coburn Park opposite the Chinnaswamy Stadium and the last man in the line had to sprint to the front. The same drill was followed for all the players and the exhausting routine finally resulted in Manoj Prabhakar jokingly suggesting that he was so fast now he would reach the batsman before his delivery did. I have been to England twice before in 1987-88 to 88 and 1988-89 to 89, as part of the Star Cricket Club, the team of Kailash Gattani, a former fast bowler, who played first-class cricket for Rajasthan in Indian domestic cricket. In the first instance, I was sponsored by the Kolkata-based Young Cricketers organization who contributed my airfare. Among other things, I remember the tour for the food we ate. We stayed in school and college dormitories and had breakfast in their dining halls. For the first time in my life, I was served cold meat for breakfast that meat could be eaten cold was a revelation to me. I was also amazed to see so many different types of cars. I have always had an interest in cars. Though we didn't owe one, of one at the time, Kailash Gattani had hired a luxury sedan and I was keen to find out as much as I could about the engineering details of these fascinating machines. Besides playing cricket, these were things that kept me occupied and I thoroughly enjoyed the opportunity of exploring a foreign country. Visiting Lords, the mecca of world cricket, was a dream come true, and it all added to my ambition to play at such venues as a member of the Indian cricket team. In 1990, the tour started with a few first-class fi fixtures, which were followed by two one-day internationals. While I was in good form at the start of the tour and scored runs in the first-class games, I did not do so well in the first ODI at Leeds on 18 July making only 19. Happily, it didn't matter because the team won, thanks to the batting of Manjrekar and Azharuddin, and we had a chance of victory in the series if we won the next game at Nottingham on the 20th. In the second match, England produced a better performance batting first with Robin Smith, the South African born middle order batsmen contributing 1 or 3 to their total of 281. Uh, we needed to bat really well to close out the series. When I went in to bat at number 6, we needed a further 1 or 5 of 20 overs. In those days, that was considered a stiff target. 
I scored a quick 31 of 26 balls and was dismissed with the score on 249 with 33 still needed to win. But we won the match and the series 2 to 0 with Azad seeing us home with an unbeaten 63. It was a perfect start to the tour, giving us some welcome confidence going into the test series. Okay all, let's end up for today. We shall continue to start reading the chapters of the book Sachin Tendulkar, Playing It My Way, My Autobiography with the next video. Until then, stay tuned. Thank you. If you like the video, please like, share and subscribe.